So I guess with this year being pretty slow movie-wise and entertainment-wise and just life-wise in general, given we've all been stuck inside for most of it, Disney decided here at the end of the year to say, hey, don't worry, there's fun stuff coming very soon. And we were like, oh man, that's so good to hear. And then they were like, yeah, and there's even more fun stuff. And even more. And even more. And even more. And even more. And they kept piling up all these new movie and TV announcements until we are drowning in them. Seriously, waking up and reading all this news kind of felt like I was in that scene from Shrek 2 where Fairy Godmother is singing that song and it keeps going and going and getting more tense and overwhelming. Bit of a random reference. But the point is, there is so much news to talk about here. Borderline too much. But hey, after all these months of lacking new movies and stuff like that, I'll take an overload of it over none at all. A lot of this does have me very excited. So today, let's talk about the biggest news from this Disney investors meeting event announcement thing. I've broken this up into Star Wars, Disney Animation, Pixar, Marvel, and other. Time codes down below if you want to skip around. Starting off with Star Wars, we've got 10 new Star Wars shows coming to Disney Plus at different points in the near future. And they talked about some of them here. Firstly, The Mandalorian is getting two spin-off shows, Rangers of the New Republic, and Ahsoka, starring Rosario Dawson. I've started watching The Mandalorian, I'm only at like episode 3, but that's not to say the show is bad, it's more just a comment on how bad I am at watching TV, and I'm not the biggest Star Wars guy, but what I've seen so far is great. But I know Ahsoka is a very beloved character from a lot of other Star Wars properties, so a live-action show has gotta be really exciting for Star Wars fans everywhere. Then we're finally getting that Cassian Andor spin-off show that they've been talking about for a while, Star Wars Andor, coming in 2022. He was one of the characters from Rogue One with the most personality, or like, story arc potential, because a lot of those characters were a bit more one-dimensional, so to explore his story more could definitely be interesting. Hayden Christensen is coming back as Darth Vader in the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. That's a show I'm excited for. And I mean, continuity-wise, it works to get Hayden back. And also, I find it fascinating how, as time has passed, people who grew up with the prequels have gotten older, and now the general discourse online about them is that they're underrated classics. Because I remember when those were seen as the worst things ever created. I mean, the memes also probably helped with that transition. Personally, I'm still not a fan of those movies, but I like that after all that Hayden Christensen has presumably been through because of the reception of the prequels, he now gets all this love for the character and this chance. A chance for him to maybe shine, and I think he could potentially be really good, since he's not being forced to read terrible dialogue, which probably contributed to that original performance being the way it was. A new animated show around the Bad Batch is coming. The Bad Batch is a group of characters from the Clone Wars, or so I've read, I haven't seen it. The Acolyte from Leslie Headland is a new show that will be set in the High Republic era of the Star Wars world. A project about a new character working with C-3PO and R2-D2 called A Droid Story, along with a new anime anthology series called Star Wars Visions. Those are both headed to Disney+. Plus. And a new Lando event series is coming. While not confirmed, I would assume they'd get Donald Glover back for this. After all, in my opinion, he was the best part of that solo movie. And that's just the series news, from one franchise. We're barely getting started here. Again, there was so much damn news. Moving on to some Star Wars movie news, the next Star Wars film will be Rogue Squadron, coming December 2023, directed by none other than Wonder Woman's Patty Jenkins. This will be about a group of pilots in the Star Wars universe, going on adventures, and also shares the title of what I know is a Star Wars game a lot of people dearly love. Sounds pretty cool, I guess? I think it's a good idea for Lucasfilm to give the main Skywalker series a bit of time to breathe until they try to make a new trilogy, and also give enough time to plan it out from beginning to end this time. And Taika Waititi is writing and directing a new Star Wars film, which will show his take on the Star Wars world, which honestly, I can't wait to see, given how talented and fun of a filmmaker he is. And in a franchise where a lot of the films recently, even the ones that are supposed to be going in a new direction, can feel a bit generic at times, giving one of the films the Waititi treatment seems like a really good idea to me. Alright, on to the Disney animation stuff. Raya the Last Dragon, the new Disney movie coming in March, will premiere on Disney Plus Premiere the same day that it comes out in theaters. This comes right after the big HBO Max news, which as we speak I'm working on a video with my thoughts on, but honestly, given that things will still be, at the very least, not completely back to normal by March, this is a pretty reasonable decision. There's a new series based on Big Hero 6 called Baymax coming in early 2022. Apparently 2022 is really hard to say when you're recording a video, I don't know why. <laughs> Along with a series based on Zootopia called Zootopia Plus, creative, coming spring 2022. Then there's a series based on The Princess and the Frog coming in 2023 called Tiana, and a musical comedy series based on Moana coming 2023. Wow, okay. <laughs> Look, there's a part of me that kind of feels like this is just milking every franchise and recognizable name dry, which we'll get to with Pixar as well. But on the other hand, I mean, these are for kids. These aren't for me, necessarily. This is something that will entertain some people. So does it really matter at that point if it's just milking a franchise? Like, if this was something like... 
Baby Driver, for example, and then they made a spinoff for Bats and Buddy and Darling and The Weapons Guy and all that, then I'd say, yeah, all right, you're just trying to capitalize off the successful film that people liked in a ridiculous, contrived way. But with these kids' properties, a kid who loves Moana and then sees there's more Moana, that's just gonna make them really happy. And I feel like, therefore, you have more leeway with these kids' properties. I don't know. Plus, The Emperor's New School was a great show, so maybe these will be fantastic. While I liked all of those movies quite a lot, I don't know if I'll be watching any of these, but hey, if they look really interesting, then why not? I've got the Disney Plus subscription anyway. And we're also getting Encanto, a new Disney animation movie set in Colombia with music by Lin-Manuel Miranda. A new Disney animated film not based on a previous Disney animated film? That I'm more intrigued by. And Iwaju, a new series developed with the African comic book entertainment company Kugali Media, which will be coming in 2022. It's set in Nigeria and is a science fiction show with themes of class and Afrofuturism, and the director says it will combine Disney's magic and animation expertise with Kugali's fire and storytelling authenticity. This sounds kind of fascinating. And after doing a bit more digging, it sounds like this is one of the properties in the new Disney Plus lineup that you should definitely keep your eye on. Moving on to Pixar, there's a new Spark Shorts episode called Burrow coming on Christmas Day. Pixar Popcorn is coming in January, a series of shorts which will all feature a variety of classic Pixar characters. If there's a Monsters, Inc. one or an Incredibles one, I'll check that out. Doug Days is coming in fall of 2021, featuring Doug from Up. And a new car series featuring Lightning McQueen and Mater is coming fall 2022. Again, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, Doug was a really funny, lovable side character who worked perfectly because of his role in the larger movie. Do we really need a series about him alone? But then again, I feel like I'm overthinking it, and if it'll make a kid happy to see more of his or her favorite character from Up, then yeah, what's the harm? And hey, Cars has already been mocked a lot, so why not? I feel like I'm getting more cynical, or just older, I guess, which I am, but it's just like, I love the character of Doug whenever I watch Up, and I love a lot of those Disney movies, and I just don't really find myself hyped up by any of these series. But Anyway, we'll see how they turn out. And in fall 2023, we're getting Pixar's first long-form series, an animated show called Win or Lose about a middle school softball team. Again, this one I'm much more interested in, because A, it's a new original thing, and B, Pixar's original films are generally their best ones by far, so I'm curious to see how that creativity translates to a series. And speaking of Pixar films, we're getting Luca in June 2021, which will be set in Italy. Great, excited for that. Any new original Pixar film, I'm at least going to be a bit excited for. Then there's Turning Red, about a 13-year-old girl who's struggling with the usual identity problems and changes that come with puberty, except the added twist that she turns into a giant red panda whenever she gets excited. Yeah, uh, remember when I said I'd always be excited for a Pixar original film? Yeah, about that. Look, jokes aside, it does sound like a weird premise, but then again, if you just stripped a lot of Pixar films down to their premise, they'd all sound pretty weird. So this one could end up being great, we'll just have to wait and see. That's coming in March 2022. And finally, Lightyear, a Buzz Lightyear origin story starring Chris Evans, is coming summer 2022. And now, at long last, for the stuff that most of you are realistically here for, the MCU stuff. Man, if this isn't spoiling your fans, I don't know what is. We got another trailer for WandaVision, nothing much new here. I mean, there's new footage, but nothing much more to say. This has gone from initially the show I was the least excited for, based on me not caring that much about Wanda and Vision's relationship, to something I'm really hyped for. Because it looks so weird and fun and unique, and like it's gonna take this universe in some new interesting directions. There was a Falcon and Winter Soldier trailer and a confirmed release date in March. This is the MCU Disney Plus show that I'm most excited for, although to be completely honest, this trailer didn't really blow me away. I'm still very excited for it, but to be real, this does look like the most kind of bland of the three MCU show trailers we saw. However, that isn't necessarily indicative of the show itself, and it doesn't change that I'm still a big fan of these two characters and the villain, and it doesn't by any means look bad. I guess my expectations were maybe too high here. Or after seeing WandaVision and Loki, I was expecting something crazy. But yeah, looks solid. I love seeing some more Mackie Stan banter, action looks cool. Still very excited for this one. And then the Loki trailer, along with a confirmed release month of May, looks pretty awesome. First of all, I didn't know I'd love Owen Wilson and Loki interacting as much as I do, but I'm looking forward to seeing more of that. Secondly, it looks different, and it looks like an interesting new story with a character where you think you might have seen all he has to offer, but now this time-traveling, time-variance authority thing is looking to put this character in a new scenario that can lead to a really fun story. Also, 
is that Black Widow? And with this being a destroyed New York and this shot of Loki running for president, it seems like it's likely the show will be exploring alternate dimensions or timelines. And what if scenarios, for example, if the Avengers hadn't stopped the Earth being destroyed at a certain point in time, like the Chitauri invasion, or something goes wrong in Endgame, leading to this shot, Basically, it seems like MCU Phase 4 is very alternate dimension and timeline heavy, with WandaVision, and What If, and Spider-Man 3, and Doctor Strange 2, and probably Ant-Man 3, which we'll get to, and now this. To be honest, I love that. I love the idea of alternate timelines and universes and visiting times in this really well-established universe like we saw in Endgame, but I do also hope that they don't go overboard with it, and it starts becoming tiresome and repetitive, and eventually loses its novelty. However, what I suspect is actually going to happen is all of these are going to link together in some really cool way, based on how the MCU wove properties together before. So, I think all of this dimension traveling and some such is all going to tie together to be the big build-up for whatever the Infinity War Endgame big climax of these next few phases is. With some fun new stories about alternate dimensions along the way. That sounds awesome. And I think it's going to mainly tie into Doctor Strange. That's my prediction. I think he might be like the Infinity Stones of this phase, if that makes sense. Like, that character will have influence over a lot of these upcoming properties. Then, speaking of alternate dimensions, What If, which for the record isn't tying into the larger MCU like these others I mentioned, it's more just a fun anthology show, we got another trailer for that, and it looks fantastic. I love this animation style, it's stylized and 2D, but still fluid and realistic looking. Haven't seen anything exactly like it before. And yeah, I think this premise for a show is super fun. The trailer highlighted some of the episodes we already knew about. Marvel Zombies, Peggy's Captain America, T'Challa's Star-Lord. Seeing T'Challa interact with Yondu was pretty fun. Also, he's gonna meet Howard the Duck in this. Why not? And then some new premises. There'll be something Iron Man 2 related, since we have Tony in the Donut. Absolutely classic shot. I think we might see an episode where Hawkeye actually ends up shooting and killing Thor in Thor 1, since we see that scene from a few angles, and Fury looking at Nero here. Plus, Loki speaking at the UN could definitely tie into that. There'll be a Captain Marvel episode, and then a lot of this Doctor Strange stuff makes me think that this show actually could tie into the larger MCU, because maybe there's some overarching story related to Doctor Strange finding the Watcher, and talking to him about alternate dimensions, and that kind of stuff that's coming up in the MCU now. Plus, we see lots of Doctor Strange stuff, some of it, I believe, in Asgard, especially given that they've confirmed that Strange will be in Spider-Man 3, and WandaVision is going to tie into Doctor Strange 2. I think he's the key to this whole next phase, and he could possibly tie this into the main MCU as well. But again, I'm mainly excited about this show because this universe has been so well developed to this point that a premise like this should work perfectly. Then the Hawkeye show was confirmed for fall 2021, with Haley Steinfeld confirmed to star along with Renner. Just got even more excited for this. Steinfeld is one of my favorite actresses. Also, just think about the sheer amount of MCU content we're getting next year. Four movies, four TV shows that tie into the movies, actually five, sorry, Ms. Marvel is also set for 2021, and What If? That's insane. They're really trying to make up for 2020, aren't they? Then we got three new shows announced, as if all of this wasn't enough. Ironheart, which will star Dominique Thorne as Riri Williams. Armor Wars, a new MCU show for the Cheeds about Rhodey fighting against people who have gotten their hands on Tony's tech. Not exactly a totally new concept, but whatever. And Secret Invasion, which will star Sam Jackson and Ben Mendelsohn, a Fury Talos team-up show. What's not to love? And I guess that'll answer all the questions set up by the Far From Home post credit scene. The reason I'm more okay with the MCU milking its properties, as opposed to some of the stuff I've mentioned before, is because it feels more justified here, or there's more of a need for it. Like, this isn't just taking a small, fun side character from a kid's film and then giving them this entire story that sometimes can work and then sometimes can just feel unnecessary. This is an entire expansive, fun, sci-fi adventure universe with lots of fascinating characters that can be used and explored and developed further, and tons of new fun crossovers and stories to tell. So while I will admit it feels almost a bit overwhelming just looking at their slate, it's extremely exciting as an MCU fan because it feels like there's actually a point behind all these moves. Some more than others, like Armor Wars, not really sure if that was super necessary, but still. How it all builds and connects together, as well as the properties individually being fun, is what makes the MCU so special and so exciting to watch. And we're not even done yet. Tatiana Maslany will play She-Hulk, and Mark Ruffalo will appear in the show as well. Iman Vellani, who's playing Ms. Marvel, will show up in Captain Marvel 2, coming November 2022. There was also a little sizzle reel for that show. There's going to be a Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special coming to Disney Plus in 2022, and Guardians 3 is confirmed for 2023. I'd guess first week in May. And a series of short films called I Am Groot is also coming to Disney Plus. Now, for some MCU movie news. It was confirmed that Black Panther 2 will not be recasting the role of T'Challa after the passing of Chadwick Boseman. I think this is the right way to go. There's no easy way to continue the story after something tragic like this happens, and I don't envy those who have to figure out how to do this. 
Maybe the best way would be to say T'Challa is off somewhere else, or on some other mission, or he retired, kind of akin to the Paul Walker character at the end of Fast and Furious 7 and for all of Fast and Furious 8, and then just make a new story without that character and have it focus on one of the other many interesting characters in that corner of the MCU. People might say, oh, it'll feel forced if you just say he's away or he's retired, but I mean, come on. Everyone knows why this happened. No one's going to be sitting there saying, that's not a very natural progression. I wonder why they did that. It's not like a contract dispute or something. So I think it's more than okay to write in some reason that in other circumstances would seem odd, but in this one would be very understandable. Then Ant-Man 3 was confirmed to be titled Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. I love that the MCU is sticking with these ridiculous titles for Phase 4. And Jonathan Majors will be playing Kang the Conqueror. I recently just read an Inhumans comic featuring Kang the Conqueror, shout out Lele for lending that to me, and based on that and what else I know about the character, I'm very excited to see him as a new villain in the MCU, potentially as the next big Thanos-esque villain. He's all about time travel and messing with time and dimensions and whatnot, plays into what it seems the direction of Phase 4 is going to be, Doctor Strange tying it all together, Kang could be the big new threat introduced first in Ant-Man 3. I wouldn't have been very excited for an Ant-Man 3 just on its own, based on the last two, but if you add in the added wrinkle of Kang the Conqueror and a more crazy, fun, Quantum Realm-based plot, count me in. Also, Cassie Lang will be played by Catherine Newton now, who I just saw in Freaky and thought was pretty good. So, hell yeah. And finally, and you know it's a big day of announcements if this is just a little cherry on top, just at the end here, tiny piece of news, the MCU is making a Fantastic Four film. Not much info besides it will be directed by Spider-Man Homecoming and Far From Home director John Watts. Honestly, perfect choice for it. I think his comedic and fun and self worth style could work really well for this property. I mean, yeah, of course I'm excited for this. What do you want me to say? These characters haven't gotten a great movie yet, although I don't hate the originals, but I think this is their chance to really shine, especially if a certain John Krasinski were to play a certain character in this. But yeah, obviously, very excited. And finally, here's the other section, because somehow, we're still not done yet. Indiana Jones 5 is in pre-production, with Logan director James Mangold and Harrison Ford returning one last time for this character. That'll be coming in July 2022. I have mixed feelings about this. I honestly don't think they should make a new Indiana Jones film, because you shouldn't recast Indiana Jones. Ford is so iconic in the role, but I also don't want to see another old man Jones adventure like we did in Crystal Skull, which was just not good. My proposal would just be make a new character in an Indiana Jones-esque film. But if they're gonna do this, I think the best way to go would be to make it a bit more Logan style, since they already have Mangold. Maybe not as dark, but like acknowledge more that now he's older and so he's not swinging around and getting in fistfights and all that. Play more into the older part of it. If he's gonna get through an adventure, have it be more through his tenacity and experience, not action. But then again, Indiana Jones is an action series, that's a big part of the fun of it, so I don't really know why they're doing this. This seems like a lose-lose in my opinion. I'm at the very least curious to see what this will be. And even taking away the Logan aspect of it, Mangold is just a great director in general. It's so, alright, we'll see. Noah Hawley of Fargo and Legion is making an Alien series for FX and Hulu. I recently started watching Fargo and it's incredible. Heard great things about Legion. This should be interesting. Welcome to Earth, starring Will Smith. I bet someone felt real proud after coming up with that one. Is a new National Geographic show coming to Disney Plus where Will Smith explores the Earth's most amazing phenomena for some reason. And Limitless, starring Chris Hemsworth for National Geographic, will be about the human body. With or without chicken diet, who knows? And finally, there's an Ice Age spin-off movie called Ice Adventures of Buck Wild, starring Buck, who will be voiced by Simon Pegg, coming early 2022 to Disney+. Those movies should have stopped after the second one, or hell, maybe even after the first one. But, whatever. Good for Pegg, at least. Get that paycheck, Pegg. Also, hold up, just realized the Mysterious Benedict Society is getting a show? I did not know that, but I loved those books when I was a kid. Only partly because they had my name in the title. And there's presumably a bunch of other stuff, there's this whole sizzle reel, but that's all I can cover for today. That's the stuff that's most interesting to me. Done. And so those were the announcements from Disney's meeting, event, announcement, fun time thing. And my thoughts on them. I'm exhausted just talking about all of this, but hey, very excited for a lot of this stuff. I don't want to jinx anything, but I have a feeling 2021 is going to be better than 2020. If the world can get back to normal, I think it's going to be a crazy year, because everyone is going to be making up for what we didn't get in 2020. Anyway, again though, not jinxing it. What did you think of all these announcements, and which upcoming property are you most excited for? Let me know all of your thoughts down below in the comments. While you're at it, be sure to like this video, check out my Instagram and Twitter at bhl underscore Hudson, check out this podcast about movies and TV and whatnot I do with a friend of mine, it's called the Poorly Planned Podcast, and subscribe for more videos like the one you just watched. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.